Hey everybody, welcome to the internal dissection of our spiny dogfish. I'm really bummed that you can't get the full experience <laughs> with the smell and the, the oiliness of this, but you know, this will have to do at this point. All right, so I have already removed part of the ventral side of, of the, uh, the stomach region. Um, just a cool fun fact for you guys, because the placoid scales um, are so rough, this actually used to be used as sandpaper back in the day. Um, you can go really smooth one way, but it's very, you can hear it, it's scratchy. Um, so if you ever feel a shark, don't rub it both ways. Just go from head to tail is nice and smooth, and but tail to head is definitely more of a rough pattern to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we see right here. Um, the largest organ in the whole entire shark's body is its liver. And its liver is not a one lobe liver like ours per se, or a two, it is actually three. Here is one, it looks like a life jacket. Here is one lobe of the liver. Here is two lobes of the liver, and here is a third medial lobe. Look how huge that liver is and how much space it actually takes up inside the body of the shark. So the liver is part of the digestive system. Um, you're thinking, why is the shark's liver with the digestive system most of the organ? Well, another byproduct of the liver is producing oil. And this oil, can you see how shiny it is? This oil is ridiculously buoyant like most oil is. And because sharks are very, very dense muscle-wise, they tend to sink if they're not swimming. Um, the cartilage skeleton is lighter than bones, so that does help, help offset the weight of the, um, the muscle. But all of this oil is also going to really much offset um, the heaviness of the muscle. Um, so medial lobe is right in the middle, and hopefully you notice this greenish tint to it. That greenish tint is the gallbladder. Another purpose of the liver is to produce bile. Bile has a greenish tint to it, and the gallbladder stores the bile. Um, right here, I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, it's got more of like a, like a little tube kind of right in there. That is the bile duct that transfers the bile to the gallbladder. Okay, so bile um, is just like soap for, for us. Bile breaks down lipids. So when the um, shark is eating, it is going to release bile into its stomach, which is down here, and it will start breaking down the fats of the food, like the, the, the oils and fish, because that has also a big lipid. Okay, so here are your large livers. Underneath your large liver is the part of the digestive system. This is your esophagus. It leads right, it's a straight tube from the mouth right down here. If you think about our digestive system, it's really kind of the same, same track, if you will. So mouth to esophagus, just like us, esophagus leads to the stomach, okay? This is their stomach right here. Sometimes we get really lucky with these shark dissections that they actually have food, their last meal inside of their stomach. It feels like that's not going to be the case for this one, especially if it's of a juvenile. Um, but let's open it up and see. I'm gonna start cutting through the lining of the esophagus first, and then we'll go into the stomach because the insides actually change. You can tell the difference of when the stomach actually starts compared to the esophagus. All right, excuse me, Finn. Okay. See here, I'm gonna get up a little bit more anterior. All right, so if you notice pretty high up anterior, this is in the esophagus, there are like these little finger like projections. Those are called papilla, and it helps um, point the food going down towards the esophagus. So that is officially the esophagus. Then you'll notice very quickly it changes more into like a wrinkled lining. This is called rugae. The whole entire point of rugae is to increase the surface area of the stomach. The whole entire point of increasing surface area is to increase the area of absorption of your nutrients, okay? So these sharks, they're not exactly the best chewers. They're going to be chomp, chomp, chomping, and they'll swallow really big pieces. Um, I have found whole squid, whole crab, half of an eaten fish before, and one weird experience, I had a bunch of little tiny black dots that looked like black marbles. I had no clue what they were. I had to call the company of where we bought these sharks from. Turns out that they, this shark, or the shark I had, swam through a huge uh, swarm of krill and all that was left were the eyeballs of the krill in the stomach. That was quite a unique experience. All right, so you have your papillae in the esophagus and you have your rugae in the stomach to increase your absorption for nutrients. Then the stomach takes this nice U-turn. It's actually a J-shaped stomach. You have something called the duodenum, which if you've taken anatomy, the duodenum is kind of like the connector between the stomach and then it goes into your intestines. So just like us again, 
esophagus to stomach, stomach to intestines. Um, also attached to the, this region right here, um, this is your pancreas, okay? Pancreas also helps with the digestive system, but also um, releasing your insulin, just like we have. And then this gray, it actually looks like a shark's tooth, I always think, this is the spleen. Spleen is also a digestive system, but one really crazy fact about the spleen for sharks is the spleen actually produces red blood cells. If you think about humans, where do we produce our red blood cells? Well, it's in our bone marrow. Guess what? Sharks have cartilaginous skeletons and they don't have any bone marrow to produce their red blood cells. So it is found in the spleen. Also another cool fun fact about these guys is their red blood cells have a nucleus with DNA in them. Ours do not. We do not have that. Okay. So going from the spleen and then you go down into, this is the, called the spiral valve or this is also known as your intestine. I'm going to cut through the spiral valve to open it up so you can actually see what is so unique about shark's digestive tract. If you can actually see in this small creature. All right. So this shark is really, really small because it's a juvenile. But if you think about our intestine and our body, I don't know how big or how long our intestine actually is if you take it out of our body, but I do know that it winds between our small and our large intestine. It winds back and forth and back and forth, and it's like some 40 something feet of intestines inside of our body jam packed. Well, this is obviously a very small um, digestive tract. So in order to kind of slow down the digestive process and not eat and excrete, ha, eat and excrete, get that? Um, they are slowing down the body by having something called a spiral valve. This spiral valve literally makes the food do a spiral, like a spiral staircase down through the intestines. Once again, it is increasing your surface area for absorption. At the, at the point of the food getting to the spiral valve, it is pretty well chewed up and, and chemical digestion has occurred. So once it gets to the spiral valve, it's pretty gooey, like a smoothie, and this is where your real absorption actually occurs. So instead of it being a hollow tube and the food just sh shooting straight through, and then getting excreted out of the um, cloaca here. It takes a pretty slow journey, lots of absorption, and then finally, anything that is not um, absorbed comes out of the colon, okay? Um, I said the word cloaca before. The cloaca is the opening. The word cloaca actually means sewer. So you can guess what comes out of the cloaca. It's, it's everything. Um, but the colon, just like ours, is the ending of the um, digestive system. The colon is what is um, absorbing any last minute salts and waters um, that is coming out of the shark. So to kind of recap for the big structures, you have your livers producing bile and lots of oil helping the digestive system. You have your gallbladder, which stores the bile produced by the liver. You have your esophagus, which has these little papillae. You have the stomach, which has your rugae, which increases your surface area for absorption. You have the spleen, reprodu uh, producing red blood cells and also helping with digestion. You have your pancreas with digestion as well. And you have your spiral valve, which is going to increase surface area for the final absorption of nutrients. So that is your digestive system of the shark. Now, if you notice, that's kind of everything that's fit into this shark. This shark is literally an eating machine. It's just eating and swimming but it has this really thin fibrous material that is called presentary. And this is what's allowing the organs, and we have this too, it's allowing, allowing the organs to kind of move around a little bit, still have their area, but gives them a little bit of flexibility, okay? So what I'm gonna to need to do is actually remove this stuff so we can see any other structures that are left inside of our shark. All right, so, oh, that just came out, there we go. Okay, cutting through the mesentery, it's like tissue paper. Okay, and I want to be careful. I can't just rip it out up here. I want to be careful because there are some structures that are underneath the liver and the esophagus that I do not want to cut out um, that have to deal with reproductive system. But because this is a juvenile shark, the, uh, the reproductive organs are not very well developed at all. Okay, so we have removed the digestive system from the shark. And look, there's really not much that's inside of that. All right. What we do have um, up here, it's very shriveled. It's not fully deflated, one right there. And then another, if you can kind of see it right there on the other side. Uh, sharks have bilateral symmetry just like us. These are actually the ovaries. If this was a male shark, it would have testes. Testes are producing the sperm. Ovaries are our storage of the eggs. 
Um, there are no eggs um, because it is not sexually mature. Um, but one interesting thing is when a female gets fertilized by a male, she is actually able to store the sperm for later use. And what I mean by later use, if the environmental conditions are not very good or if maybe she doesn't have enough food, she will store the sperm for later use and then when the conditions are ready, then she will allow the sperm to actually fertilize the eggs. She has two uteri. Here's one, see it's just like a little bag right here that would fill up and the other one um, is not here. Okay, look at all these oils, all right? The reason why I know there were two uteri is we used to get pregnant or we would every once in a while get sent a pregnant dogfish and she would have probably three pups in one uterus and then four, I've only seen a max of seven, but I'm sure there's a little couple more. Um, so we had seven pups. Um, these sharks are ovoviviparous. What that means, it has that two-stage birth where the sharks are actually in an egg case inside um, and then they hatch out of that. They have an, a yolk sac, which was also really cool. We were able to pull out the pups in different stages of development. Some had, um, some were bigger and had smaller yolk sacs because they had already absorbed all the nutrients. And then others were smaller and had really big yolk sacs, meaning that they were not ready to be birthed. Um, their, uh, their gestational period for this starfish is actually 24 months. So these females are pregnant for two years. Um, and that allows all the development for that two part stage. And then the pups, once they are ready to be born, will come out of the cloaca. Remember again, I said cloaca means sewer. So everything, urine, um, excrement, and babies are coming out of this cloaca. Um, Sometimes in the uterus, you have the ultimate sibling rivalry where the larger pups, if they are not birthed out yet and they have essentially run out of food, i.e. their yolk sac, they will actually eat their smaller siblings. So if you think that you have it bad with your sibling, just imagine what being a shark is. Tiger sharks do that too. All right, something else that is down here um, that you can't really see, you need to turn it. Is this finger-like structure? No, this is not the penis. The claspers, if it was a male, would be external. This is called the rectal glands. The rectal gland is ridiculously important for sharks. This is what is going to pull um, excess salt and water, but mostly salt, from um, its food. If, like a bull shark, for instance, can do fresh water and salt water, the rectal gland will actually either concentrate the salt inside the body, if it's going into a more salt water condition, um, or it will get rid of the salts if it's going to be more fresh water. This rectal gland is able to maintain the salinity inside the body so that the shark always is um, in complete homeostasis. The rectal gland works in conjunction with the kidneys and you're like, wait a minute, there's no other organs inside of here. The kidneys, we've got two of them. Well, if you see this black line, it's got some white squiggles that go like this. They're actually tubes. Their kidneys are tubes. There wasn't really a lot of space left inside the body plan of a shark. So the kidneys are now tubes, the sharks. And one goes on this side of the body wall, the spine, and the other one goes right down here. And the, and the kidney will also help with excretory work. Um, also, let's go to the gills, okay? I went cut through um, a little bit of the mouth side and I wanted to show you the gills, okay. Let me get, change things up a little bit. All right, so there are three parts to the gills. Um, this is one big gill right here. And sharks have five gills, or five pairs of gills, so 10, five on each side. Um, the first and most obvious thing right here are, are these gray structures, okay? These gray structures are called gill lamella or sometimes called gill filaments. This is the actual point of where gas exchange takes place in the shark. So where it's taking an oxygen from the water and it's getting rid of the carbon dioxide from the body. So gill lamella, Port of, uh, part, the point of diffusion. This right here is called the gill arch. The gill arch is cartilaginous, just like everything else, including the jaw. And it's really just providing a support structure for the, the filaments. And then the third part of the gill is actually pretty cool. It's these little teeth looking structures right here. These are called gill rakers. Notice it kind of looks like a rake. Um, kind of two parts to the gill rakers. The gill rakers help spread out the gill and keep your surface area, but Notice they're on the inside of the mouth. These keep food, or big chunks of food, from getting into the gill lamella. You don't exactly want your gills to be clogged up with food bits because then they wouldn't be able to perform diffusion and gas exchange. So these gill rakers keep food going down through the mouth into the esophagus. Um, sometimes, like if a shark is going through a harmful algal bloom and there is a lot of plankton in the water, that could allow the gills to get clogged up because these gill rakers are spread out enough that plankton would be able to come through it, okay? The gill lamella, gill arch, and your gill rakers.
okay? Um, one final thing that I did not do, but they did mostly for packaging purposes, is you can see a cross section of the shark. In the very, very middle is the spine. And again, it's cartilaginous, okay? Cartilage, skeleton, chondric, these. Um, in the very middle of the spine would be your spinal cord. Okay, so this portion right here is your spine. And then if you notice all that yellowy stuff, these are all the muscles. Um, they're very, very muscular, very strong animals. You can see the nice striations. Um, if you know about fish, fish are cold-blooded animals. So sharks are fish, they are cold-blooded. But for instance, the great white shark, what they have found is that the great white shark is actually a warm-blooded species. Um, they have different muscles just like we do. We've got our fast twitch and we've got our slow twitch muscles. The fast twitch would be more for sprinting, going after a prey pretty quickly. The slow twitch muscles are usually the ones in the tail base that are consistently moving at nice slow speeds for just cruising through the ocean. Um, for the great white, because they are so big and because they are continuously swimming long distances, their slow twitch muscles are actually firing on off off enough energy to consider the great white shark to be a warm-blooded species, which is pretty awesome. So once again, you can see how everything nicely fit into the shark. It is all about structure and function. There is no wasted space at all in this shark. Um, like I said before in the last video, this is a perfect predator, 400 million years of existence. Um, their populations are not doing well because of humans and our shark finning. We are cutting off the shark's fins while the shark is usually still alive um, for shark fin soup. We're throwing the shark back into the ocean, usually when it is still alive, and it is suffocating to death because if a shark can't swim, then the water can't pass over the gills, which means it's not getting its oxygen. So don't be afraid of the shark. Sharks are more afraid of us. Um, respect sharks. Have a healthy little respect for them. Give them their space, but just appreciate how amazing these species actually are. I love sharks. They are so darn cool. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the shark dissection. I know it wasn't exactly what we wanted to do. You wanted to get your hands dirty and nice and greasy and oily and stuff, but hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot and have a great day. Bye.